Hi, welcome to this fishbowl. My name is Latasha Gillespie, and I'm the head of global diversity, equity, and inclusion for Amazon Studios. Our team is responsible for ensuring that there's diverse representation in front of the camera, behind the camera, above the line, and below the line. We also work really closely with our creative partners to ensure that we're telling very inclusive and nuanced narratives and storylines. And we're always inspecting our processes and systems to ensure that there's equity and that we're opening the door for more underrepresented content creators. I'm really excited to be hosting today's Fishbowl. I get the pleasure of interviewing my good friend and the star and producer of Amazon Studios original movie, Sylvie's Love. Please help me welcome Namdi Asamoah. Hey, Tasha, how's it going? I'm great. So Namdi, bear with me while I tell the people a little bit about you. In 2017, Navi produced and starred in the Amazon Studios film Crown Heights, which was his first feature film lead role and earned him a Film Independent Spirit Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor, as well as an NAACP Image Award nomination also for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, Crown Heights won the Audience Award in the Dramatic Competition in the 2017 Sundance Film Festival. Yay! Uh, in October 2018, Nandi then made his New York stage debut at the Vineyard Theater, uh, where you played in Good Grief, a first-generation coming-of-age journey of love and loss and growing adulthood, and you received critical praise. And the play was also hailed as a New York Times critic's uh, pick. And then earlier this year, we actually got to see you on Broadway as you debuted in your first Broadway production of Charles Fuller's Pulitzer Prize winning drama, A Soldier's Play. And you also recently finished filming a recurring role in the Quibi series, When the Street Lights Go On, opposite of Queen Latifah, um, which is really exciting. Uh, so now, so now we're getting into like, I mean, what are we doing? <laughs> like... Okay, okay. But the last thing people may not know, is that prior to all of this glamorous Hollywood life that you're living, you spent 11 seasons in the NFL. I did. Yes, and you were considered one of the best defensive players in the league, receiving multiple All-Pro and Pro Bowl selections over the course of your career. So you're just a Renaissance man. <laughs> no, not quite, but thank you. That was great, Tasha. It was a great job reading. Um, <laughs> I know all these things about you. I don't have to read. Yeah. <laughs> but today we're here to talk about you as a producer and star of Sylvie's Love, alongside the beautiful and talented Tessa Thompson. Yes. Yeah. So I know we want to show the audience a brief trailer, but anything you want to set up before we get started? Um, About the film? I mean, it, this yes. is... Uh, it's a it's a love story about two young people that that fall in love over a, a summer in the 1950s in Harlem, and they break up at the end of that summer. And five years later, they bump into each other in New York, and their lives have gone their separate ways, but they realize that they still have feelings for each other. Wow, this never happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> So now listen, uh, I want to play a, a play the trailer for our audience. It's such a beautiful story. So why don't we pause for a second and let them fall in love like we did? Great. Tell me about this new boy at the store. Hey, what's your favorite song on this? You don't know what love is. I am not answering that. <laughs> is he cute? I didn't really notice that much. <laughs> My band's playing tonight at nine. If you want to come. I've met a girl who knows as much about music as you do. <laughs> and television. Don't get me started. I've seen every episode of everything. How was it? He's extraordinary. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Can I walk you? Life's too short to waste time on things you don't absolutely love. But how do you know if you love something absolutely? I guess when it's the only thing that matters. The van got off at a gig in Paris. Come with us on tour. I'm afraid I can't. But I think you very well could be the next John Coltrane. What are you gonna be? 
If this is love. WNAT Television. I learned about the assistant producer position. Are you married? Yes. Hey. The producer's assistant's not the best job for a housewife. Why should I hire you? Because I didn't know that a Negro woman television producer even existed. And all my life, that is all I've ever wanted to be. It's been a long Sylvie? What are you doing in New York? Recording an album. So good to see you. You too. You're working? You're not being a very good hostess. And what will people say? I can't be the woman of your dreams while also trying to be the woman of my own. I guess I just wanted you to be happy. Even if I couldn't be a part of your life. Pleasant experiences ahead. Don't pass it by. Uh, man, every time I see the movie or I see a trailer for the movie, I just get this like overwhelming feeling of just being able to exhale. Like this movie is so mm. needed for right now. Um, and yeah. I think Eugene Dash, who's the director, did a beautiful job. But um, what what do you get? What sense do you get when you watch it and when you see trailers? Yeah, that was the goal. I think the goal was for people to exhale. And, and when we made the film, obviously, we didn't know that we were going to be going through COVID and lockdowns and social injustice and racial injustice and, you know and and elections and all sorts of everything that that has happened and all of the uh, you know not to get too grim but all of the deaths and it's been a yeah. tough year so yeah none of that we didn't plan <laughs> obviously we didn't plan the release to be around that we wanted people to exhale in a different way to be able to say you know let me leave the cynicism at the door and let yeah. me just enjoy this couple and really be able to fall in love uh, and exhale and relax. And now it's turned out that it's it's a different type of exhale because it's coming at the end of such a tumultuous year. Um, so I really think it's it's going to be a great gift for people. I, I agree. A great gift that actually comes on Christmas Day. So I'm super That's excited right. about that. That's right. Yeah. That's a, you know, no pressure, Nami, but Christmas Day releases, that's a big deal. It is a big deal, but the you know that's all thanks to you guys at Amazon. I mean, to 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 put a film out on Christmas means that you really care deeply about the film. Like you think it's one of your your top films, so you know that isn't lost on us. So we're very excited about that. And before we go any further, I have to thank you for all of your help in getting this film into the shape that it's gotten into. Uh, I remember when we first uh, signed over with Amazon, we had a meeting. You and I had a meeting. I think you had a meeting with everyone on the Sylvie's team <laughs> separately, and we all got on the phone, and Tasha's great. But you really, you know, took charge and got in the driver's seat and said, you know, this is a film that I want our audiences to see, and I want us to push it out in the best way possible. And, you know, we're just uh, really grateful for that. And all jokes aside, that's a very, you know, very grateful for your help with it. Listen, it's, I, I didn't deserve that, but thank you. I will I will say thank you anyway. And um, it's, just, it's just been a pleasure. Like the whole team is great. The movie is great. Um, the music is great. The costumes are great. It's like, it's hard not to fight hard for this film when there was just so much excellence that went into it. So I, I really should be thanking you and the team, Eugene uh, as the director and Gabby and all the other folks and Tessa. Who, who put together such a beautiful piece of work. And so it's it's our honor and pleasure to see this film ushered into people's homes on Christmas Day. So, um, yeah. and listen, it, it's not lost on me the kind of year this has been, and to your point why it's so special. I honestly believe we are, we are writing the next Bible in 2020. Like 2020 has been a year of plagues, locusts, <laughs> pandem pandemics, like, a <laughs> hundred years from now, the next Bible will be written based on 2020. I'm yeah, convinced. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So in the movie, we see you as a jazz musician, 
Uh, I want to know where did you draw inspiration for this role? And I want to know were you actually really playing the instrument in the movie? I was really playing the instrument in the movie. Um, it was it was a labor of love. I fell in love with, when I was a kid. I played the clarinet for a couple of years, and so I understood. I, so when I said I played the clarinet, I didn't expect a laugh from you, Tasha. But I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna take that in a positive way. I played the clarinet. It wasn't like the oboe or something. It was the clarinet. People play the clarinet. So I was playing now the you clarinet. Just offended, you just offended all my oboe playing friends. The oboe fans. That's right. That's right. I had to. I had to make myself feel better. So I played the clarinet for two years. Um, and I think one thing that you learn is how to the mouth placement, the breathing, um, what to do, how the reed works, you know, all of that stuff. And so for me, coming back and playing an instrument that had those same tools, it mm -hmm. felt kind of like riding a bike. You know, it wasn't okay. it wasn't it, it, it was difficult, but there was a sort of a bone in there already. I kind of knew how to get into it. Um, and then I spent like a year playing the saxophone, just learning it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be on screen and it look fake. You've seen okay. it before when you're watching a movie or a TV show and they're supposed to be playing the piano and you're like, they're not playing the piano, you know? So I didn't want that. And so I learned all the music and I started to play, yeah. So something tells me that that kind of discipline comes from your football days. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Without yeah. a doubt, because in, in what you learn in football, I think you learn this in all sports. I'm, I'm a big, like, I think everyone should put their kids in sports, you know, growing up or something, even if they're not athletic, because you learn discipline in that sort of way. You learn what it means to prepare and sometimes over prepare and then when you get in the moment be, being able to throw all of that preparation away and just use whatever is already inside of you um yeah those were things that i learned and i had a coach once that said the way you do one thing is the way you do everything mm. and mm. and I've, I've transferred that part of football into just every part of my life i try to be as prepared as possible and then throw it away in the moment. Listen, that was a word. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything. everything. That's right. That's right. Although I'm not, I wasn't super prepared for this interview. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm here nonetheless. It's because you knew it was just going to be a conversation with me. We just didn't That's tell right. you that there'd be like 25,000 other people watching. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. A little thing. You know what's okay. great? about you know what's great about covid is like when we do these sort of things even though it's 20,000 people we don't have to do it in front of the 20,000 people yeah. so those jitters that you might have you don't have anymore like to me it's just you and i yeah. um you know so that's one of the covid gifts i think that's fair yeah that's what yeah we need we need a gift out of 2020 so we'll take that yeah definitely yeah, but I want to ask you, so the, the character of Robert, like, was that a stretch for you or or really that was just tapping into, tapping deeper into Nambi? I have no, I don't think I have a romantic bone in my, I, I just, it's not my thing. And so when the script came, it was the one thing, I'm being honest, it's the only thing that I was nervous about because I don't, I you know, I don't, yeah. Like, how do you tap into that? Like, how do you get into that? And so, uh, I don't know. That was a lot of work. For it to come across the way it did, and people are like, oh, you and Tessa, you guys have great chemistry. Yeah. And, you know, and you should you should hear Tessa talk about it, you know, because she's like, oh, I was in my head the whole time, and I'm surprised that people really think that it worked because I didn't know if it was working. And it's the same thing for me. It's 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 strange when you're acting and you're to do romantic roles and things like that. But it's worked well, out. You, yeah, you you pulled it off beautifully. I mean, it is so good, and it does feel so natural, feel so authentic that the audience wouldn't guess that the two of you were in your heads. Well, did Robert at least teach you anything? Did, did Robert teach Nandi how to be romantic after this? There's, I'll tell you what, there's something about Robert's character that I didn't 
fully realize I was tapping into. But because everyone comes back to me and they start talking to me about it, it's helped me. And I had a conversation the other day with my uh, father-in-law about this. Um, and it's male vulnerability. Mm. Because growing up, I mean, he and I were both talking. We were told repeatedly, boys don't cry, boys don't cry, you know. And then as you get older, the men don't cry. Um, and there's no crying in, you know, you hear there's no crying in baseball, you know. So right. we, that was never a, um, that was always sort of like a, a block for me yeah. or, or like a wall to get over and just being vulnerable, not even about crying, but sharing. Yeah. Being able to just share how you really feel. And the feedback that keeps coming from people is, I'm, I, I love the vulnerability that you brought to the character and that, you know, Eugene would write a, a character like this, a black male who was vulnerable in this sort of way. And so I've learned, I have learned from that a lot from Robert, just that being able to be a little more open and share um, myself a little bit more. I think that's beautiful. And I think you, you said something in there that it's one thing for men to be taught be strong all the time and not show their vulnerability that that's a weakness but th but there's another layer of that as a black man your ability oh get out of here oh get out of here there's a level of it as a black man there's also a level of it as an athlete you know yes. so you combine all of those because i tell people all the time you want to if you lose a game you know you want to tear down the locker room you want to yeah. break things, you want to cry, you want to do all that. And, and when the camera's in front of you, you have a, ge a generic response. Listen, it was a tough game, but you know, we're going to, we're going to fight next week and we'll be back. We're going to go to practice. We're going to watch the, you know, you say the yeah. same thing yeah. every time, but that's not how you feel. Oh. And so you've got that as an athlete, you've got as a black man, just the, this, this barrier of you need to be macho. You need to be strong for everyone, you know? So yeah, yeah. it's, yeah. Well, it, well, it is. It really is a gift. And again, we can't say thank you enough for giving us that gift. Um, and also just, I think the film in general around bringing beautiful black characters and, and the movie is about their love, not their oppression. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and I and I think that's so important. And I know there's a lot of stories that we have to tell in our community. And some of those stories do involve oppression. But I love the fact that this one doesn't and it's really about two just beautiful human beings and their vulnerability and their love and their personal dreams and aspirations and breaking ceilings uh in every way uh and, and this is not your first movie this is your this is your second amazon original movie shout out to crown heights shout out to crown heights and shout out to amazon for continuing the to save my films <laughs> amazon loves the films so we they've kept me in the business Listen, if that's what you call it, we'll take it. Like, keep bringing us <laughs> I Am 21 films, like, all day. Yeah. We, we love your yeah. work. But but what got you into film in the first place, especially coming from, you know, such a successful career as an athlete? I kind of just had to figure out what I was going to do next. And um, acting was something that sort of came to me while I was playing. Um, wow. I, was doing, I was doing a commercial um a nike commercial and the director afterwards just really i mean he came up to me and he was like you're amazing you know i work with athletes all the time and no one and it was a nike commercial. he was just like we kept doing takes and you kept giving something new and it was fresh and it was authentic and i was like okay and he said when you're done playing you should look into this and uh and so i looked at you know and the director was peter berg who um you know, did Friday Night Lights and all everything, and so I took right. his advice and and other people's advice, and I just looked into it and got into the world. And you know what? I all I wanted to do was act. When I was done, I said, "Let me get straight into acting." And then yeah. I realized I wasn't getting any of the, I wasn't seeing the roles that I wanted to play. Mm. You know, I was seeing. I was always getting like, oh, will you audition for, you know, the bouncer at this club who's going to, you know, who says, I need to see your ID. And then that's the end of his, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, ah, okay, this isn't what I was expecting. So I realized that I had to, 
create my own work. And that's how I started to become a producer was to okay. create my own work. I, I wasn't even, and then I fell in love with producing. So yeah, the, the journey has been, you know, it's been great. That's, that's kind of how it all came together. So, okay. I didn't realize that, but that is so important. And I think, you know, even on Sylvie's, you, you come to this, this particular project as a multi hyphen and the, you know, the star of the film, but also the producer, and you also produce some other big dramas, the banker, Harriet, the banker, Harriet. Um, I mean, uh, Beast of No Nation. Um, yeah, there are, and there are smaller ones too, but yeah. You, you know, aim higher, Nandi. <laughs> right. <laughs> like really Listen, big, big, important projects. All you can do is really go off of the script. I, and that's not a lie. Like that's what you have. And it's, yeah. and, it's and, and then it's hiring people that don't have to be the best at mm. what they do, but they have to have great attitudes. Mm. You know, I can, I can work with anyone. I mean, you can be the 10th the best uh, out of 10, you know what I mean? But if you have yeah. the right attitude and you, and you excite people come into work and your energy is in the right place, yeah. oh, you can make a beautiful, you can make a beautiful picture. We've been able to do that. Yeah. What yeah. kind of, agency does producing give you besides being able to choose your work um but, but what other kind of agency does producing give you that that acting doesn't um well that's the big one is being yeah. able to choose your work i think um well so producing for instance is that's the team right right you know i think as the, as the actor you're the player on the team you know, you yeah. have to see where you fit in. But the the production is the team. The producer is, in a sense, the owner, um, yeah. you know, the, or the general manager. And so I think being able to say, I'm going to tell stories that I haven't seen yet, that I don't know will ever get made if I don't make it, you know, that, that uh, I don't want that to be a, seem like a pretentious thing to say, but it, you know, a lot of these stories, Sylvie's Love was not gonna, that this project was not gonna get made. We went to any and everybody um, before we started shooting and everyone was like, no. And it was weird. It was black cast, 50s romance. There's no audience for this, you know, which to us is crazy. And it yeah. took someone like you guys who who said, Listen, we have a streaming platform where this can reach, you know, a hundred times, a, a thousand times the people that it would have in a theater and yep. it deserves that audience. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, uh, to your original question, I think just being able to fill a void in the industry um, producing really gives you that ability. Listen, and you are so right, like it is still hard for stories to get told and it, even harder sometimes for stories that are made by and made for underrepresented communities to to be told, right? And and to be done at such a level of excellence like Sylvie. So first of all, kudos to you all for understanding what you had and pursuing it despite all the no's. Second yeah. of all, I'm so grateful for all the no's <laughs> because it allowed us right? to say yes. <laughs> Right, right. I mean, there's there's this weird thing that Tessa says all the time. It's like we are we're sad that this film never existed, but we're also grateful because we were the ones that were able to bring it to light. You know, to bring a, a film from the '50s surrounding two black people falling in love. You know, this is we were able to do it. Yeah. I, and I think this film has such a broad appeal, right? I think it's going to appeal to multiple generations. Uh, I, I think there's something in there for young people. I don't want to give away too much because, you know, there's some great talent in this film that's going to appeal to, to every generation, I think. Um, the storyline is just such a universal one that everyone will be able to relate to it and feel it and understand it. And I think specifically for the Black and Latinx community, um, I think there's just such 
an appreciation for the authenticity of our stories, our stories of joy, our stories of love, our stories of hope um, that I think the film didn't, gives us. Didn't we exist, Tasha? Like, didn't we, didn't we exist in the 50s in a way that wasn't just about, um, you know, water hose and dogs, uh, you know, like, wasn't, but didn't people fall in love and didn't people have kids? Yeah. And didn't people take walks on the beach? You know, and didn't, have great didn't careers. black people exist? Yeah, didn't, yeah. Didn't we had careers. So why can't we see that? Let's, yes. you know, let's, um, I don't know, let's celebrate that. You know, it's, it's interesting, like, even when you leave the 1900s, the question is, didn't we exist outside of slavery? Yeah. And the answer is yes, we yes. did. Let's see some of those stories. Let's see yes. all levels of the humanity. You know, let's, anyway, we could talk about this for <laughs> for days, but here we are. Yeah, and, and uh, again, so, so needed and done in such a very beautiful way. Like, I mean, from the, where we, in the movie where we live, the cars we drive, the clothes we wear, the <laughs> hairstyles, you just feel proud. You feel so yeah. good. Yeah. You feel, yeah, really. you feel seen. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's amazing. You know, you said something about um, we were talking about all the no's you got. One of one of my models that I live by, and I'm always telling my my boys, my children, is you know, if somebody has your yes, you just have to figure out who it is. Mm, wow. Wow. I love that. I yeah. love that. In football. Um, when I was coming out of the uh, in the NFL draft, so the first round, you know, you have all the teams that pick, and I think there were, you know, there's 32 teams. Right. So we went through the entire first round, and we got down to the last two picks, and all these teams went. So I wasn't even thinking about it, and the 31st pick, the Raiders chose me, mm -hmm. and. I remember I went to practice. It was one of my first practices. I was talking to one of the GMs, and he said that exact same thing. It was a similar thing. He said, you know, all of these teams passed up on you, but all it takes is one to say yes. And and I'll never forget that because, you know, obviously you have, like, a chip on your shoulder, yeah. you know, as you go out throughout your career of all the people that said no. But, but you know, in a larger way, you do realize – it doesn't end at the first no. It doesn't end at the second no. You keep going, and someone will eventually say yes. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And you, I love what you were talking about, too, just all the life lessons from sports. I mean, I think it helps you learn how to win with humility and lose, you know, graciously, right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I, I thought we'd play a little lightning round. So, Let me ask you a question. I, did, did you did you play a sport growing up? I did not, but both of my boys. So I had, you know, you know, Damien and Miles are now 23 and almost 21. Right. And they they played sports their entire life. And actually, Damien, as you know, played um, football even in college at Howard. So you know, yeah. and you know, my husband being a, a basketball coach for most of his life, I spent for a lot sure, of time. For sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So. So you get I it. Kept you get stats. Old, Yeah. You. <laughs> you kept stats at the games. You were the. <laughs> oh, listen, listen. So did my you cheat? Did, did you cheat for your son? Oh no! I even <laughs> created a new. Ca I created a new category. You ready? Okay. <laughs> for basketball, it's called bust ons. What? What is that? It's when you are defending someone and they bust a shot on you. You got bust on. <laughs> oh man! Oh, yeah. that's perfect. That bust is perfect. Hated that one. Bust odds. <laughs> yep. That's perfect, Listen, Tasha. That's great. The NBA might be calling me. I know. That's. Yeah. <laughs> you can add that to the AWS stats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lightning round. You ready? So yeah, you're gonna okay. say the first thing that comes to your mind. No cheating, now. You know, overthinking this. No, quick. How much? Okay. Wait, 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 hold on. Before I overthink, let me overthink. How much time do I have to answer? 
10 seconds. Oh, that's plenty of time. You gave me, oh, that's easy. 10 five. seconds. Come on. Five? Okay. Okay, five. Okay. All right, here we go. You ready? Yeah. After you admire the most. Uh, Paul Robeson. And by the way, are you going to use all five seconds for each question? I'm just asking. No, 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 no. Listen, that was a tough one. <laughs> That was a tough one. Get the, they'll be quicker. Go. They'll be quicker. Okay. First place you want to travel post COVID? Uh, Hawaii. Favorite guilty pleasure? Um, uh, uh, ch uh, ice cream. What? What is this? Family <laughs> food? I, yes. <laughs> give me 20 seconds, like five seconds. New hobby, new hobby or favorite uh, family activity you've discovered during COVID? Oh, um, uh, this matching games, matching uh -huh. games with the kids. Uh, do you know what? Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. Good. Okay. What have you good. learned? What What have you learned by being a father? So, what have the kids taught you? In life, you're gonna give me yep. five seconds to tell you what I've learned being a father. I'll tell you what I've learned being a father. I've learned patience. Mm. There you yeah, go. I didn't get that one. Okay. Um, you know patience. Yeah. No. And they're yeah. grown now, so it's over. All right. It's too late. Dis <laughs> too late. Discipline yeah. or spontaneous? Which one are you? Disciplined more than yeah. spontaneous, but I yeah. love spontaneity, but discipline. Okay. All right. What are you doing for self care? What does that mean? So, in this time of 2020, there's been a lot of bad news, a lot of things that can weigh us down physically, mentally, spiritually. What are you doing to take care of yourself during, during this year? I, uh, I'm, um, do you know what I like to do? What's that? I like to take a drive. Okay. All right. I like to drive. I like to just go out and drive and just by myself in the car, drive, listen to music. Okay. That's, it. That's my self care. I thought you were talking about like, do you like, are you doing facial self care? Like, I don't know if that's. I don't use that term. Gotcha. Listen, no judgment here if you were. Wow. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Nick. <laughs> One thing that's brought you joy in 2020. Uh, this interview. This interview. Aww. This interview. Yeah, this interview, definitely. And, and then the last one, let's see if you know, what's listed as your first IMDB credit as an actor? I don't know. Is it my that commercial? No. Nope, it's actually. I don't know. I don't know. Friday Night Lights. Is Friday Night Lights the first credit? Okay. Yep. Two thousand nine. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Oh, IMDb. I see what you did. IMDb, yeah. Amazon. Okay, I see what you did. Well done, Tosh. It's well all done. in the family. Okay, I have two questions for you. Lightning round. Ready? Okay, go. Uh, fav favorite holiday movie? Sylvie's Love, Christmas 2020. Except Sylvie's Love, Tasha. <laughs> yep. And you have five seconds. Oh, every every Christmas Eve we watch. Um, uh, you know the one where you're gonna you're gonna put your eye out. Uh, a oh, Christmas a Christmas story. story. Is that your? Yeah. That's your. Uh, okay. Every okay. Christmas Eve we have it on continuous loop. Okay, that makes sense. Um, ham or turkey? Turkey, no pork. No pork, okay, good. Um, uh, uh, so cranberry sauce out of the can or from scratch? Both. <laughs> yep. That was like a, that was a bust on right there. Like that was a, <laughs> both. Yeah, well <laughs> about well five years ago, I learned how to make the fresh one, and so I do both. Okay, good. Good for yeah. you. Yeah.
Yeah. Good for you. All right, that's it. You know I love this film, and you know I love you. Um, you've oh, been such, good. just such a breath of fresh air uh, in the Amazon family. I'm so happy you're part of our family. I'm so happy I can consider you a friend. Um, you're hilarious, um, <laughs> which is always great. Uh, so what do you want? What do you hope when 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 we sit in our homes on Christmas Day? You know, hopefully with at least. 10 or fewer family members, um, yeah. given the COVID-19 yeah. restrictions. What do you want the audience to take away from this beautiful film? Well, first I want the audience to watch it and then tell someone else to watch it after they're done. So just tell one other person at least to watch it. Um, I, don't, I think the takeaway is that um, it's okay to it's okay to let yourself be loved. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's okay to let yourself be loved by, and I'm talking about by someone else. It's yeah. okay to to allow that. Um, I don't, and that's as deep as I'm going to go with okay. this. But that's what I. That's what I'd say. Yeah, I mean they do love each other in a very unselfish way. It's so it's. Anyway, you know we could talk on and on about this movie. Nandi, yeah. thank you for thank bringing you. us Sylvie's love. Thank, thank you. you for just being a part of our family. And thank you for doing this interview with me. This was so much fun. Thank you. You're the best.